Let's return back to an earlier project in which we created the rectangle calculator. Now that was an exercise in really just creating a visual basic application. And I said the code would make sense down the road. Well, here we are down the road. I want to look at the code for the input part of our algorithm in which we have dim width comma length as double and then width equals cdbl txt width dot text and length equals cdbl txt length dot text. Let's unpack those three lines. In programming, we work with variables. And variables are simply containers that have some data. And in VB, we create those containers or those variables with the keyword dim, which stands for dimension. We're going to dim the variable name as a particular data type, and then we can assign a value to that variable name once we've declared it. So that dim statement is called the declaration statement. And then we assign a value using the equals operator, and we're assigning the value on the right to the container on the left. We can do that all at the same time. We can give an initial value when we dimension the variables. So we can say dim variable name as data type equals initial value. So we're dimensioning a location in our random access memory to contain some value. And that memory allocation has an address such as 14893,80552. We wouldn't want to work with those addresses, so instead we give it a meaningful name. We give it a variable name that allows us to access that location in memory. And we tell it then what type of data is being stored. The data type, of which there are many different types, and we'll look at in just a second, allocates a certain amount of space to in memory to contain that data, but also identifies that variable as, as a particular object type. Now that is an instance of a class. When we're declaring a double variable name, we're declaring a container that's an instance of the double class. Remember, classes have properties, methods, and events. And so all the properties and methods associated with that data class are available to our variable. And in that allocated space, then we store our data. And that data may change over time. That's why we call it a variable. It varies as opposed to a constant, which never changes. I like to think of variables as being boxes. Different items take different size boxes. We wouldn't put our shoes in a television box, nor would we put our television in a shoe box. Obviously, it couldn't fit in a shoe box. So the different boxes is the size allocation, and the, but what goes into that box can be taken out and examined, or we can take it out and replace it with something else. That's what a variable does. Here are some examples. We can dim size as integer, and the next statement here, we can actually dimension multiple variables as the same data type at the same time. So I've got two variables, rectangle width and rectangle height, and I'm declaring both of them as containing a double data type. The next statement is assign an initial value to each of our variables. So student age is an integer containing 19. Cube measurement is a single data type containing 12.25. So singles, as well as doubles, can contain decimal values. An integer is a whole number, no decimals. So we have dim my tax rate as double equals 0 0.085. First name is a string variable, contains the literal string of Jane. And then enrolled is a Boolean variable. It can be either true or false. And here we're setting it to true. Now the rules for naming variables are they have to start with a letter or an underscore. They can contain numbers, however. So they may contain letters, numbers, and underscores, but no special characters, no spaces, no dollar signs, no hashtags. They cannot be a keyword. What's a keyword? Anything you see in blue is going to be a keyword in our Visual Basic Code Editor. So words like dim or integer cannot be variable names. Those have very special meaning in Visual Basic. Those are the keywords. My recommendations are you should start with a lowercase letter, use camel casing in which each subsequent word of that name has an uppercase letter. Otherwise, they're all lowercase. And make it meaningful and relevant. Now, there are times when I'll use just a single character like I or J or maybe something like XYZ. And if I'm using it for maybe a counter in a loop, that's pretty common practice. But for variable names that contain data, I'm going to give it a meaningful name. Something that reflects what type of information is being contained. Here are some examples. So some valid ones would be my name. Circle radius, XYZ is a valid name, may not be the most meaningful, but I use XYZ actually quite a bit for, as I said, for loops or simple temporary data. 
and we can have underscores or numbers in our name. So client address is valid. But we can't start with a number. So first company here is invalid. You can't start with a, with a number or a digit. It's got to be a character. Last name has a space in it. That's not allowed. Print is a key word. My hashtag name uses a special character that's not allowed, as does income dollar sign. Those will all generate errors. Well, the data types that we can assign are of many. Here are the main ones. There's a few beyond this. And the ones we're going to mostly work with in this class are highlighted in yellow. So we're going to work with strings, which contains alphanumeric text data, characters, such as the word hello, is a string. The amount of space allocated to that is based on the number of characters. So each character takes a byte of storage. So the word hello in a string variable will take five bytes to store it. A char data type, or as a character data type, contains a single character. And we usually use single quotes to denote those. So a capital A or a lowercase b could be a char data type. A byte is a whole number ranging from 0 to 255. And a short is a little bit larger whole number that ranges in a value from a plus or minus 32,767. We'll mostly work with integers, though, for whole numbers. Then we have a range of both positive and negative, a little over 2 billion. If we, however, had a whole number that maybe we had a really large number, we wouldn't know how many inches there are from here to the moon. There we can use a long number. So byte, short, integer, and long are all whole numbers. We'll mostly use integers. Single and double and decimal are what we call floating point numbers or decimal numbers. We'll mostly work with single and double. And the difference between the two is how many digits can we have that's relevant in that decimal. Single has seven significant digits. And that's usually enough for most things where a double has 15 significant digits. Now, I tend to use double much more than single because a lot of math routines automatically use double values. So I'm primarily using string, integer, and double. And then we have a decimal value, which gives us a much longer range. Hardly ever use decimals. So we use more for scientific type of applications. We have a Boolean data type, which contains either true or false. And then we have a date data type, which contains dates and time. Back to our rectangle calculator, we declared width and length as double type variables. And then we assigned to that width variable the text of our TXT width control and converted that to a double. So that CDBL is a method that is part of our double class that allows us to convert string expression to a double value. That is called casting. However, we could say with equals txt with dot text without the cdbl, and that creates a potential error. In a lot of languages, outside of Visual Basic, you might get an error, something like cannot implicitly convert type string to double. These are languages that are strictly typed. Now, in Visual Basic, you can turn strict typing on by adding an option strict on at the top of your code. Well, why does that tend to create a potential error? Well, because width is a double data type and the text property is a string data type. And we're going from one data type, we're trying to fit a small foot into a large shoe, or even more difficult, trying to fit a large foot into a small shoe. Now, obviously, the small foot into a large shoe is not an issue. It will fit. It may not be the most comfortable walking, but it will work. And that's called implicit conversion. That'll work. And if and if we're doing things implicitly, like in this particular case, it will automatically convert the text to the width as long as it fits. But using the CDBL is an explicit conversion, and we want to get in the practice of doing that. So we always want to convert from one data type to another because it will help us to avoid errors down the road, and particularly as we move from one language to another. There are conversion methods to all the various data types. You don't necessarily memorize this. Just remember it's C and then the data type or an abbreviation of the data type. So C int is converts something to an integer. We have C S N G converts to a single and C S T R converts to a string. So if I wanted to put the width value, which is numeric, back into the text property label, I could say LBL output dot text equals C S T R of width. However, there's a more common way to do that, and that is to use the two string method. So there's a two string method associated with every single class that converts the class to some sort of string. 
So more commonly, I'd probably use LBL output dot text equals with dot to string. But either of those statements would work. And we see the to string method used down here for the output of our rectangle calculator. There we're taking LBL area dot text equals have a literal string of area and I'm concatenating with the ampersand or adding to that string the numeric value of area converted to a string and inside the the parentheses I have n2 in quotes and that means give me two decimal values. So round it to two decimals. I do the same thing for the perimeter. So we're using two string in this case and giving an optional argument in the parentheses of the method to tell it how we want to display the text. We'll talk about strings in the next unit as well as formatting numeric values in different ways. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the Programming Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.